towards the Ilos label, forms part of the Swirinis group in Tomb Raider and Thief and Hitman and Deus Ex and the like, and Square also owns Taito, which owns Space Invaders. But, as I'm being a historian today, I just for those who don't know, I'll just tell you a little bit about the history of the video games industry. It really started back in 1961 when uh, <laughs> Steve, Steve uh, Russell uh, created this um, space simulation between two spaceships with limited fuel and limited uh, um, fu fuel and firepower. And it was just like a, a little laboratory entertainment. It was never commercialized. It wasn't until the 1970s when Nolan Bushnell, his company, uh, Atari created Pong, and if you look at it now, you think, God, how did that ever sell? It, it sold because it had great gameplay. But people say to me, what are the three most important things in a game? I will say, gameplay, 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 gameplay. Because everything else supports the gameplay experience. If you have great graphics and rubbish gameplay, it's not going to sell. If you have great gameplay and any graphics, it's going to sell. Obviously, graphics and technology support the experience, but the fundamental reason people buy a game is because it's fun, not because it looks good. Um, so, Atari kicked it all off with, with Pong, and then games entered the home in the early 70s with the Magnavox Odyssey. It was actually a disaster because uh, Magnavox, in their marketing, foolishly said that you needed a Magnavox TV to plug it into. Most people didn't have Magnavox TV, so they didn't sell many units. Big marketing mistake. If they said it plugged into any TV, it could have been the dominant platform. Also, only one game was available on this. Um, it really took off, again, because of Atari with the 2600, um, which was available to on for any TVs, and it had interchangeable cartridges, so it wasn't just one dedicated game. So it gave consumers choice of what games to play. The Japanese entered the market in the late 70s because they saw how wonderful it was. Uh, but they was, their premier target was uh, the arcades. And uh, everyone remembers Space Invaders and Asteroids. And in the late 70s, the, it was so full, the arcades of people playing games, and that um, they actually almost ran out of 100 yen coins because they were all stuck in the machines and the <laughs> Japanese men had to do an emergency mint. And uh, Pong, so if this all works, we'll just play a little video of all the kind of early stuff.
after the games were done later and uh, the, uh, the Mario draws the 3D the one, yeah. the most advanced two games in 1995. Definitely. Well, 3D, well, Tomb Raider is one of the very first characters, not only with a female character, but also a 3D character in a 3D world. So the, the third character in yeah. the third person going into. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a huge difference from the usual side scrolling games. But even now, you can see, just 15 years, how dated this looks in technology terms. Yeah, I remember when I first played Tomb Raider, I said, Ooh, what a nice graphics, you know, yeah. look at the water, <laughs> how real <laughs> it is. Evolution from the <laughs> <Nice. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> in the second version, yeah. the mission in Venice. The trouble it's is now, when, when, when you get to virtual realism on the, on the consoles, they have this um, term called uncanny valley, whereas they look so realistic, but they still act like zombies because you can't get the facial expression, therefore some people suggest that the graphics has gone too realistic yeah. and they prefer stylized graphics now because they're not too realistic and that lacks on bits because you can't get the, the nuances of the facial expression. But moving on, in the home the Sony PlayStation became the dominant platform and hardware sold by software and uh, Tomb Raider was obviously one of the prime moves of PlayStation. But today we've got you know, loads of platforms. PC, the consoles, handheld devices, mobile, Facebook's become a platform, iStores, everybody knows. And we spend $50 billion a year on, on video games. Um, why is that? Well, we, kind of, we can get an emotional response from people. We can make them happy, we can make them sad, we can make them uh, afraid, we can make them want more. But often games have had a sort of negative press. <laughs> Um, people who don't play the games only think that they're, they're all violent, and yet only 3% of the games are carrying 18 plus rating. Most games, whether it's brain training games, or social games, or iPhone games, are hit, as we all know, for family, for family uh, consumption. Um, so we've got great content diversity now, as I say, a lot of it, most of it is fit for family consumption, whether it's cooking games or Pony nurturing games, or training your brain, or Wii Sports social games played in the living room together. You know, the games have become very diverse and very family oriented. So we've moved from a sort of niche uh, audience <laughs> to a, a mainstream audience. And today we've got children playing, youth play, senior people play, <laughs> and that's me on the left. <laughs> and in fact, everybody's playing games now. And uh, it's great to see. So you've got a wide variety of consoles, but the whole is a huge move now, as, 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 as you guys all know, to the online world. And um, you know, countries like China, where it's 100% online, and uh, I'm sure Turkey's virtually 100% online games now. Um, and they say that by 2012, that the revenues from online gaming will surpass packaged goods, which is quite extraordinary given the size of the packaged goods markets in the United States and Europe. Um, so, how do companies like these new companies spring out, these online companies? Um, they, they've got huge audiences. I mean, Club Penguin was sold to Disney not long ago for about $500 million. Uh, why did Disney buy Club Penguin? Well, they saw that children were coming to their website not just to look at Disney characters and look, find out about Disney films, they wanted to have an interactive experience with those characters. And Disney weren't able to offer that experience, so they bought Club Penguin, and I'm sure you're going to see over time not just virtual penguins on Club Penguin, but you're going to see some virtual Disney characters. And because, as we know, as I said before, interacting with something is far more compelling than just looking at it. And then for the older consumer, World of Warcraft, 12.